We are learning more this morning about the missile attack ordered by President Trump on an airbase in Syria. U.S. allies are praising the move, while Syria and Russia denounced it. Welcome back to CBS This Morning. We're, of course, on top of this story, and there's new video overnight that shows the aftermath of the early morning strike. Syrian officials say at least seven people died in this attack. There were two Navy destroyers in the Mediterranean that fired 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles. President Trump says the Syrian base launched Tuesday's chemical weapons attack that killed more than 80 people. It is in this vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. There can be no dispute that Syria used banned chemical weapons, violated its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention, and ignored the urging of the UN Security Council. CBS News senior national security contributor Michael Morrell was deputy director of the CIA. And CBS News senior national security analyst Fran Townsend was homeland security advisor to President George W. Bush. Good morning and welcome to both of you. Fran, let me start with you. What are the implications of this strike? Look, I think in, in a single sentence, we saw President Obama draw a red line and we saw President Trump enforce it last night. Um, and that gives him leverage. This has been a horrific violation of international norms, that is Assad's use of chemical weapons. And so the president acted not only in U.S. national interest, but in the interest of our regional allies. He was with the King of Jordan, clearly was moved both by the pictures coming out and the, the tremendous threat that this poses to the stability of Jordan. Michael, what message does this send to Assad and to the world in general? So he will look at the, the target set, right? The target set was a single air base used for the chemical weapons attack. So the message Assad will take is, I cannot use chemical weapons again. He will get that message. This will deter him. But we did not go after regime command and control. Um, so that will also send him a message that we are not going to try to force him out militarily. So he will, he will read both of those messages. Is it risky for him to read it that way? In other I, words, might, in fact, uh, these things escalate so that there is a regime change plan? So I think he will continue to use his conventional forces to go after his own civilians and to go after the opposition. Th that killing will continue. And if we want that to stop, we need to put additional pressure on him. Uh, Fran, should he have done more? I mean, they, he's getting praise from most of the world. Uh, secondly, he's getting praise for the way it was executed, fast and with secrecy. Right. Look, Charlie, you know, when you talk to sources inside the administration, they say the driving principle was proportionality. One, you didn't want unnecessary civilian casualties when what you were doing was retaliating for the horrific civilian casualties. Two, you wanted to be careful not to be hitting other sites. Look, there are six major airfields. We only hit the one from which they launched this awful chemical attack because what you didn't want to do is hit potential other stockpiles and cause a plume where, where you caused the release of sarin or chlorine gas. Uh, Michael, this is a chance for uh, the Secretary of State to really see what his relationship with Vladimir Putin is when he goes to, on Tuesday to Moscow. This is going to be a very important trip. Um, the Russians bear significant responsibility for what uh, President Assad has done in Syria to his own people. They bear responsibility for the chemical attack um, last week, and it's going to be very important for Secretary Tillerson to make that clear to Putin and to make it clear that his support for Assad has to stop. What determines what the U.S. does next from here, Fran? Michael, to you, too. Fran, you go first. Well, I, look, I think what you're going to see, I know that the administration is now looking at how much of the underlying intelligence are they willing to declassify to allow Nikki Haley to make the case in the U.N. Security Council. We've seen lots of sort of statements of support from allies and partners around the world. Um, and so the question is, not only is this a U.S. responsibility, right, to, to deal with the, the civil war and the fallout and the instability it's causing regionally and to our European allies. But what are our partners willing to do now? Um, we need more than statements of support if we want to change the, the, the civil war in Syria. And so I think you're going to see sort of the pulling together of the coalition in the region, the Saudis, the Jordanians, the Emiratis. What are they willing to do to actually now use this as a leverage point 
to turn the tide there. Michael, speaking about leverage, what are other ways that the U.S. can scare Assad, additional types of strikes, tactical strikes at his closest assets? So the president sent a very strong message to Assad and to everybody else in the world, you can't use these weapons. He gets very high marks for that. Um, he could get even higher marks that if he uses this as an opportunity to bring the world together, to put pressure on Assad, to come to the negotiating table and end the civil war in Syria once and for all. He has an opportunity to do that, and I hope he does it, and it has to start in Moscow next week. But you've talked about perhaps bombing presidential aircraft on the, on the ground, his helicopters, his um, office buildings. So, Nora, that's what I meant earlier when I said we did not go after um, regime command and control targets. We did not go after targets that would send him a message that he has to go. Um, and I actually think it would have been good had we done that last night. Um, we didn't, so we're going to have to find other ways to put pressure on him. Uh, if, if this succeeds, uh, because the president constantly refers to the red line and President Obama, if this succeeds, uh, it will one more calls questions about you have to make sure you are, if you make a statement, you're willing to back it up. That's right. And, and I do think this puts sort of very explicit pressure now on those we also have pol national security issues with, the Iranians who are supporting the Assad regime, the Russians. By the way, if I was North Korea, this is the timing of this while President Xi is here gives impetus to that conversation with the Chinese. Look, we're willing to act alone. That may not be our preference, but we need you to act with us. In this particular case, Michael, do you think the U.S. should wait for other countries to join in before there are additional attacks against Syria, if that is the conversation? One of the, one of the, <laughs> the important successes last night was that the president acted decisively. Mm -hmm. He didn't take weeks to try to bring other people on board. That's a message that is going to be heard not only in Syria and, and in the region, but as Fran said, around the world. I think that's very important. Um, and so I would encourage not waiting for others to join. Um, I would encourage the president to continue to act decisively. Michael Morell and Fran Townsend, thank you. Thank you.